morning and welcome to the 64th annual Convocation Exercises of Covenant College. Because this is true of every one of you, if you are a believer. Look up here, if you've been asleep, please. This hand represents you. This hand represents God. This is what happened when you converted. You were kind of just hanging out. And God started to come after you. And you went, I believe that's God. And you grabbed back. But if you follow him for more than five minutes, you'll do this. And if you follow him for more than five days, you'll do this. How do you stop this or this? Don't look at this. Look at this. I will not let you go. It's my grip on you, not yours on me. Start here. That's where he starts. Right here. That's why he starts with sovereignty. Glorious work. A greater need that we all have as humanity. All of us all of us, everybody in this room, we all battle fear and anxiety. But fear and anxiety is supposed to act as an alarm, an alarm to awaken us and to remind us that we have a deep need. And that deep need can only be satiated in the living hope who is our Christ. Glory, Lord, of these people! So I said to the guy, I probably shouldn't have, but I said to the guy, where are you going? I'm here for Jesus! Well, he turned around and came back. He started to pummel me. He tried to pummel me. I got him in the Muay Thai hold up behind his neck just to control him a bit, you know, so he wouldn't kill me. And I'm holding him, trying to preach to him in his ear. Jesus is going to damn you and let you repent and trust him, right? It didn't, didn't work. So. So this guy's trying to pound me and the gang's now surrounding us. And the, the, the gangster selling drugs who wouldn't look at me, who was angry, he came running up. And he started screaming at the guy who was attacking me. Let him go! Leave him alone! We need this guy! We need the gospel! is sick there's five of us praying but we need we need 35 to pray we need 65 we got to get a hundred we need everybody praying now at its best it's because we're just inviting a community out of love to cry out to God on behalf of love for who we care about but at its worst it almost feels like we only have 38 votes we only got 38 people praying and God's up there going, yeah, you only got 38. I'll listen when you get to 40. Who wants a God like that? I don't. I don't want anything to do with that kind of God. That's just the God and goddesses of any religion anywhere. It has nothing to do with the God who became a person to empathize with you in every way possible, yet without sin. So that out of relationship with Him, we could speak to him as if he was our father or our mother. Cheery attitude. The temple was a place where addictions in form, function, or being so oppressed you have no control. How should you think about one? And he says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. And we want to take just a moment as we begin to reflect on God's mercy. Um, you are loved 
by someone who knows everything about you. Just think about that for a second. I'm willing to guess that if I were to ask every single person in this room, is there anyone in this world that knows everything about you? You'd say, well, of course not. Say, is there anybody in this world that if you shared everything about you, they would love you? You're getting into some dangerous territory there. You are loved by someone who knows everything about you. Every thought, every motive, every action. Knowing all of those things still wants to claim you as his own and give you his name. That is mercy. Important in yourself, you respect that. He's been teaching me and reminding me. When we talk about something. How far have we come? Impactful for you as well as you think about the norm around you, right? See, God is not embarrassed by the messy life and the messy details of these two messengers. Remember, remember, like Mary was a woman, formerly demon-possessed prostitute. You would think that this would be such bad luck for God, but that's the point. Because of their mess, they're exactly perfect instruments for God. They are more acquainted with their sin. And so they're, they're more beautiful and believable and grand is the gospel to them, right? And, and as they would tell everyone about it, that, that message would be spectacular. That myth. Sharing the gospel means sharing God's word. Now, we don't always quote it directly, but it is the word of God we have to share. In God's good providence, he made us human beings to be word creatures in his image. How amazing that we can speak words and understand them and make things with them. How amazing that we can understand the gospel through the written words God inspired with Jesus Christ just shining out from beginning to end. This is what we have to share. It's the good news about how to live forever. Sharing the gospel means sharing God's work. You and me. And the work is never over. All right, in chapel because that sounds super exciting. Speak it to me. God's up and up and up. Day to day, real life. Where it's important to um, answer her parents. This. This is a stunning development. This. He became an outsider for you on that cross. He who knew no sin became sin for us, and God the Father slayed him on that tree so that you can have the benefits of a reconciled relationship with God above. So that you can be called sons of God, having the very title of Jesus, so that you would not only be forgiven and loved and embraced by God, not only be a chosen generation, but a royal priesthood, so that you, as Paul would write in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, would be the dwelling place of God. And Ms. D.A. Carson, I don't know if anybody here. They all think that the triumph, the victorious entry into the city, is the moment of glory. And Jesus says, no, no, no. You want to know what will make me attractive to a dying world? You want to know what will make me attractive to those who are suffering in darkness? It's not me coming in on the donkey. It's me hanging bloodied on the cross. But I, I went to my... Uh... Ended. Lord, help us to... Grab... The same average intelligence levels, for example. Serve me like no three words. Love and delight, ultimately... I, I need you to come with me. And if they can't... And here it goes. Mm. Oh, Lord... I will praise you, though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you comfort me, behold God, is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. 
for Yah the Lord is my strength and my song. Oh, Yah the Lord is my strength and my song. And so we need solitude if we are going to become all flame. We need solitude if we are going to create the space for the Spirit to do deep work inside us and to dismantle our false selves so that our true selves can emerge and we can become fully human. And my eyes closed. How often do I refuse to hear the conviction of the Holy Spirit through the Word of God? How often do I stiffen my neck and insist on my way, my desires, my comfort? How about you? Are we even listening? Maybe you realize you're not. Perhaps you realize that you've been face to face with God with your fingers in your ears and your eyes closed. Or maybe you sense your neck stiffening or your fists tightening. Here's some good news. God is not afraid or tempted to leave you when you refuse to listen. Instead, he is near, ever communicating, drawing you into repentance and surrender. And when we finally decide to listen, he is there to embrace us. All he could ask her is, how did you know? you popular right now. Um, in Christ alone, while fortifying. Varsity football team that we climbed. Where do I find my sense of self? who is able to save. Father, teach every student the simplicity and beauty of this. I sought the Lord and afterward I knew He moved my so to seek him seeking me it was not I that found you Savior true no I was found Thou lovest me, thou lovest me, always thou lovest me. Thanks be to you, O God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.